Hello everyone. Um, today we're going to do sort of a follow-up to the, the first um, Jon Snow tutorial that I did about four or five months ago. Um, it, during that one we took some of the Jon Snow cholera death data uh, from Soho in London in 1854 and um, did some fairly straightforward um, kernel, kernel density mapping and in this one we're gonna we're gonna follow it up with some other ways to investigate point um, data sets specifically when you're dealing with uh, disease data like this uh, and so in this one what we're gonna be talking about is a handy little tool found in the arc toolbox um, under the spatial statistics tools and in the measuring geographic distribution subsection there is a tool here called the directional distribution or the standard deviational ellipse. Now what the standard deviational ellipse is going to do is it's going to give us an opportunity to draw an ellipse around either one, two, or three standard deviations of our data. Um, where this is useful is this helps us compact and understand how our data is distributed. Um, you can also use this tool um, with weighted data, so if there's certain um, case information that you want to take uh, into account. For example, maybe you want to break out um, the actual deaths from just people who remained ill or are ill for, from something or base it on some other critical feature. Uh, you can do that. And, and the, the great thing about ArcGIS 10 and working with these tools is that they've really expanded um, some of the exclamations um, and descriptions for how these tools work. So if you look over here, if I show the help, I have a description of exactly what the tool is doing. So you can see here, I have my input point data set, and then I have my output ellipse. And the nice thing about these scripts as well is that you'll notice you have this little green globe or orb here. These indicate fields that are required, and when successfully filled in, those would go away. And then anything that's optional will obviously be marked as optional. Um, as soon as you click on one of these fields, you'll also get a description over here. So when exploring these, that's that's kind of a nice way to just kind of open up the tools and begin working with them and figuring out what they do. So in this case, what I've done is, is I've taken the data that we had that represented the color of deaths from before. I'm going to remove the surface that we built last time. So I'm just now looking at my um, fairly dense concentration of my cholera deaths. And I added some fake data to the data set um, that just broke it up into two separate distinct uh, groups of cases. So again, this is mock data. This is not actually um, representative of the data, but I created essentially a new field here that represents something that I've called case ID, and it basically breaks it up into two months. So seven represents cases occurring in July and eight cases occurring in August and you can see I've already symbolized it here so when I use that breakdown you'll see that I get a pattern like this alright so what the standard deviational ellipse is going to let us do is I can use that case field if I want to sort of re represent how I want it to collect the data now I'm using obviously an exaggerated um, um, example here but I, I think you'll get the point once you see how the tool works on, on how you can use it for your own data so I go back to my toolbox, I open up directional distribution, and here in the first field what I want to do is pick that case field that I set up. Oh, I'm sorry. First I got to pick my input feature class, uh, and that is the cholera deaths by month layer. So I pick that. Next, I want to tell it where to save it. Now, um, it's always a good idea with these tools um, for the toolbox when you're running scripts. Some of them won't work on shapefiles. They won't always let you export shapefiles directly. So it's best just to set up a, a new little geodatabase and you can store your data there. And I actually like to do this by project because for me it keeps my data a little better organized. Um, but you'll see up here, if you haven't set up a geodatabase before, you'll have this option over here in the upper right hand corner to set up a new file geodatabase. Just click on that button give it a name and you have a nice place to park your data. So here I'm just going to call this my standard deviational ellipse and this is by case 
and I click save and you'll see my little green orb goes away now you have the option here under ellipse size to choose one two or three standard deviations so I'm choosing one I, I, I want to represent something that again if my data is normally distributed captures approximately 68 percent of my points uh, two and three are, are pretty much just going to capture everything so it's a little less meaningful in my opinion or at least the way that I've used the tool uh, then down here for weight field, I'm not going to use anything again if I had maybe another field in my data set that broke it down into severity or, or something else and I, I wanted it to treat certain cases as being more um, important um, to my analysis, I could, I could set a weight field. Um, but what I really want to do here is set the case field. So I pick case ID here and then I click OK. So these tools will take a little bit of time to run but not too bad. and You'll see down here, uh, it's already gone away, but you'll usually get this little text crawler that indicates that something's working. And what will happen is if this works correctly, I should get two ellipses. Uh, I should get one representing the, um, the cases that I have here symbolized in black, and then one um, representing the cases in purple. So where this is useful for looking at disease data is you can use this technique to actually track the progression of the cases as they occur. So obviously again this is this is made up data but if we had case data broken down by time you can see in cases like this how disease could actually spread through a community based on months. So I'm going to open up that layer quickly and symbolize it. doing anything fancy here. I just want to basically have them called out separately. And we're just about done. And there you go. So again, if you want to test this out, what you can do is you can select the cases that fall within these ellipses, count them up, create a percentage, and again, if your data is normally distributed within each one of these ellipses by case ID, you should be looking at somewhere around 68% of your data. That's it. If you have any questions on how to use this tool or anything else, feel free to post them to the comments.